What's going on everybody and welcome back to a brand new episode on my channel. As always, I'm Jay and guys, it's been a little while, it's been a hot minute, but I'm back with another review. And this time, like the thumbnail says, I'm reviewing the movie Glass, which is rounding out a trilogy made by M. Night Shyamalan, which includes the characters from uh, Unbreakable and, of course, the split film, all under the same film moniker. Unbreakable is really where we need to begin with this story. It is one of the best as far as M. Night Shyamalan is concerned. It was one of the several films that he was on his A game. He was at his peak right before his tumultuous kind of path, as it were, into kind of being a little bit more or less consistent, rather, as far as a filmmaker. It legitimized comic book stories in mythologies for the film audience where the matrix had people thinking that they were hooked up for a computer for a good portion of their life after watching it for some reason this film made me feel like there were extraordinary abilities to be had in normal human beings solid film amazing twists amazing characters and depth and sam jackson samuel l jackson that is and you know bruce willis had been at their a plus 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 games in this film in between then and in Glass, we had this other film, Split, which was also a surprise hit, as I said, because between Split and some other films that M. Night Shyamalan had not only produced but also tried to write and direct, there was a tumultuous road here. And for Split to kind of be what it was, but then also throw in this little Easter egg bonus scene, which included David Dunn, the character that Bruce Willis was in the Unbreakable film, was interesting. And then before I knew it, Glass was announced, and that really got me excited because I wanted to see what type of changes and what type of trajectory and arc these characters had been on since uh, the decade plus that they had been established. So cut to this film, you know there were expectations for sure. Is this going to be a good M. Night Shyamalan movie, or is it going to be something along the lines of The Last Airbender or The Happening? Luckily, I'm glad to say that it wasn't, and the film overall is a fantastic film, very good, and I highly recommend seeing it. I really like the elements that the trailer gave you where they were trying to almost dissuade you into thinking that these people aren't really extraordinary. They're really just normal people. Sarah Paulson's doctor in this whole film will have you second guessing everything you've ever believed with the pre-established films as to whether they are really supernatural or extraordinary or super powered beings or just people with delusions in their head. And I thought that that was a fantastic attempt at this film to be trying to project on you. And as far as whether or not that's true, you'll have to watch the film to find out, because I'm not going to spoil it. Every character in this film has a great trajectory. David Dunn going through being the overseer, as he's been dubbed, being the vigilante hero, saving people, helping people who are being taken advantage of or hurt and everything as we see in this film. He's been continuing that and his son's even in this film. And actually the supporting characters from both films are all in this. So you have the girl who actually escaped the beast and the horde. You have Elijah and his mother who were there. And then you have Bruce Willis's character, David Dunn and his son who are also there, which I thought was very interesting. All three of these characters are holed up in the psychiatric hospital where they're basically being exposed to treatments which are trying to show them that they are not superpower beings, that they're suffering from delusions of grandeur. And again, it brings up the normal twists and turns that you might expect from an M. Night Shyamalan movie with an ending that you will not see coming. Again, for better or for worse, you will not see this ending coming. This movie, although it is a great film, it did things... Personally, that I felt very uncomfortable with. But then again, art and film and everything like that, you can't compromise what the artist wants to do. Again, you in your mind as an audience member, you have expectations. You're always going to hold expectations for the most part. And if you try and say that you never go into a film having expectations, that's a bold-faced lie. Now, can your expectations be met or exceeded or, you know, be lacking or anything? Absolutely. And actually, your expectations can be thrown out the window in two minutes flat watching the film, and you can be exposed to something that you didn't even expect, and actually something better than you expected in that regard, like I said. But with this film, how they ended up doing certain arcs and how they ended up wrapping up this story was really wasted potential on my part. I feel like this is definitely a, a trilogy... And it's going to stop there because the film 
I don't really feel like the film and kind of the story can go anywhere else from here. And I think that that probably adds to it. I feel like because it is a trilogy that was unexpected, I would have liked to have seen them explore it more in other films. But again, I think that the direction and kind of the way that they did the story here, it doesn't warrant a new story for better or for worse. It is what we get. And, you know, even though it's something that you might not like, especially if you like the previous films, specifically Unbreakable, I think that this is definitely an ending that is befitting the characters and kind of the situations that they fell in or they they found themselves in in this film. And it's very hard to speak when you're not trying to spoil the film. But uh, again, that just speaks to how the film is with these characters and how you might feel attached to some of them, especially with the fact that I really liked and enjoyed the Unbreakable film and how pivotal of a piece of cinema it was for me personally. But um, overall, definitely see it. If you're a fan of Unbreakable and Split, you have to see it because this is the uh, swan song, as it were. And definitely go and see it. If you are a little leery what M. Night Shyamalan film you're going to get, I'd say go and see it on a Tuesday or on a, a day where it's matinee price. That way you're not feeling so much buyer's remorse, as it were, as I always like to recommend if you're a little con concerned about the film. But guys, this one is definitely one for the books. And if you're worried about finding yourself in an emulate Shyamalan film that is terrible i think that this one's safe of course i'm speaking for myself and what i got out of the film but i highly recommend it i gave it three out of five stars but anyway guys that's all the time that i have for today like i said i definitely enjoyed this film despite some of the things that they ended up doing choice wise it's worth a watch it's worth going to pay your money and seeing it in theaters for sure and guys don't even expect to to be able to decide what the twist is or or second guess the twist you're probably not going to find out or if you are that good then i just put my foot in my mouth but anyway guys that's all the time that i have for today so thank you so much for watching and until next time guys take care bye